What's going on YouTube? Uh, I have chosen my top three watches for this upcoming trading week. Uh, we will begin with the economic news and then lead into the top three picks and then move over to the, the stock chart. Um, so we'll begin here. So we got Monday, Tuesday, not much for news here. Wednesday, we have PMI. And then Friday, we have Jackson Hole Summit. Um, where Powell will be giving this speech. There is a little bit of something on Thursday here. I'm not real sure. I think the big day is Friday, um, where Powell maybe gives us some sort of insight as to where they think inflation might be going and what they might be doing with interest rates. Maybe give us something. You know, who knows? It, it definitely seems like the market, in my opinion, is waiting for this which is part of the big sell-off not only did the market need a correction but it also i think is um, a lot of profit taking because of the uncertainty of what the fed is going to do next um so we'll begin over here with nvidia um nvidia also catalyst this week is earnings on wednesday the 23rd post market but uh over the course of uh, the one year, 130%, year to date, 202%. Um, NVIDIA is um, their guidance for this upcoming earnings report is $11 billion plus or minus 2%. Um, I believe uh, that uh, analysts don't care. I mean, I think it'll matter a little bit if they do hit that number. They probably will effortlessly be based on how many orders they've gotten in from so many different companies. If you just kind of keep half an eye on the news, you can see that this company just gets, you know, 5 billion in orders from this company, 5 billion from this company, 5 billion from that company. So, I mean, I don't think it's going to be that hard for NVIDIA to, to hit $11 billion whatsoever. Um, you know, they're probably not producing, you know, if there's a $5 billion order, it's not like, oh, here it is, we'll send it to you, we'll ship it out next week. You know, it's gonna be a course of probably a, a, maybe a year, you know. But uh, as long as there's no, uh, you know, su supply chain constraints for them, hopefully, you know, hopefully that's not a big deal. But you know, we'll, we'll probably find out. Um, and then, you know, analysts are predicting this, this to really grow uh, for the next fiscal quarter by almost $2 billion. So, you know, if they can come in and have their guidance above $13 billion and maybe look for $15 billion of guidance, you know, that's a year. That's one additional year that analysts are looking, you know, forward looking on this company. This time next year, they're looking at this company doing $15 billion in revenue. But I think that right now is... I think there's a real good chance that they blow analyst expectations out of the water. And if that's the case, Wednesday, Thursday morning, the market's going to gap up quite a bit, really. I, I, I'd be really surprised if, if not, but we'll find out. Uh, next on the list, charter communications. So this one is more of your longer term play not so much your short term trade next week it could be a short term trade next week but probably not so year to date up 23 percent over the course of one year only up eight percent uh they announced their earnings um a little while uh, a couple weeks ago now and they are purchasing their shares at these levels right now which in my opinion always is a, is nice to see when the stock has been beaten down so much and the company starts buying their own shares, it kind of tells you, it kind of gives you another little confirmation point that this company believes that their 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 share price right now is undervalued or fairly, you know, probably undervalued. Um, because they could probably spend this one point or however many billions of dollars. They didn't even say, okay, so $378 million is what they spent. Um, they could have spent that on something else. You know, when you, if you look at their balance sheet, they've only got like $478 million of cash sitting on their balance sheet. Um, so they could have used this cash to, you know, build up their, their cash pile and they didn't, they used it to buy back their share. So 
kind of gives you a, a general idea of what they think of their stock right now. And then we come over to the valuations of we're going to do Charter and NVIDIA, which will come to the third ticker here in just a second, but the third ticker doesn't have a valuation. Um, so we'll begin here with NVIDIA. So we come through, we do all these valuations here. We have a peg ratio, price to earnings divided by growth of seven and a half, which you want to see two or less to be a good peg. And obviously NVIDIA is not even close to that. The years to it to equal its valuation is 89 years. It's a lot, right? Price to book value, 58 one is good is great um benjamin graham's valuation 75 dollars discounted cash flow 113 multiples comparing it to other companies in its same area 40 fair market value only one that is green 592 peter lynch valuation 71 average price of all these five combined 170 dollars with a 30 percent margin safety of 124 dollars a share um yep come over to charter peg 4.7 again two is ideal or less years to valuation 13. uh price to book value they this company has a lot of debt more debt than cash so this price to book value doesn't that doesn't work um benjamin graham valuation 653 discount cash flow 881 multiples 401 a fair market value or fair book fair value sorry uh $1,105 Peter Lynch valuation 505 with an average price of these five average together of 709 with a 30 percent margin safety of 496. all right so keep those numbers in mind we'll pop back over to the third pick of the week which is going to be TMF is the ticker symbol TMF is a three times leverage ETF that follows the 20 year it's the bull ETF of the treasury, 20 year treasury. Um, so this is the 10 year treasury. And we can see over the course of time here that um, right now we're trading at about 2007 levels. Um, and if you, it seems like most analysts are, are thinking that we are really close to what could be the high highs of um our yields on our longer term yields and potentially the shorter term yields too eventually what i think i think friday is going to be the day when jackson hole after that's all done is when these yields make the decision whether they go higher based on what gets said or they finally start breaking down and, and trending lower so I think that's why these yields are where they're at. I think that's why the market's kind of selling off. I think everybody's just kind of sitting on the sidelines waiting for Jackson Hole to come through. And once that comes through, we'll have some more insight as to what's going to happen or have a general, have more of a, more information to maybe get make a better um, decision on where things are headed next. So we'll take a peek here at the 20 year, 20 year based on the, the all time chart that they have. It's at, it's at its highs here. Um, so then we'll come over here real quick to these, the, the stock charts. We're going to start with TMF, the one we just talked about. So this is the this is the three times ETF that tracks the, the treasury. It's the bull ETF, three times leverage. And mind you, this is probably a decaying leverage ETF over the course of time, right? So over the course of the existence of this ticker, it is at all time lows. Also, if you look at the existence of the ticker, look at this volume, right? Not just even when it, we are in a decline, but people have been picking up TMF in the course of the last, really since really this year, all of this year for the most part, people have been picking up um, TMF. <clears throat> now, my assumption is we're just it's just going to kind of hang out down here for for the remainder of this week um friday i believe is when this ticker will make a decision whether it moves higher or whether it moves lower personal opinion i believe the path of least resistance is higher probably not going to go lower if it goes lower it probably won't go much lower 
but I foresee what happens is this thing comes back up, retest. You got resistance here at 10 bucks. You've also got your trend line at 10 bucks. I'm going to get an assumption it comes up to here, fails, comes back, kind of hangs out down here again. And once we get potential confirmation from the Fed that interest, we're going to start, you know, reducing our interest rates, then that's when this is just going to explode, right? So it, it, the timing seems to work out based on this chart. We move up, we we fail, and then right about this 2000, 2024, early 2024, which is what some analysts have predicted as when we might start seeing some price cut or some interest rate cuts is right where this trend line comes to you know, convergence where you have your support range and then you have your downtrend and then you break through, you know, that's, that's what I see on this. Um, whether that comes to fruition or not, we'll find out. Uh, so we'll, now we'll hop over to NVIDIA. There's nothing to see here. This thing's just up in space. I mean, there's no trend lines to draw anywhere. Maybe if you're on the smaller time frame, a 30 minute time frame, one hour time frame, there might be some shorter term trend lines that you can draw in here. But for the most part, over the course of weeks here, days, months, it's just straight up. So, I mean, and then come Wednesday when this thing reports its earnings, it might continue going higher. You know, it's it's uh, it, it's up there. And if you look at the valuations that we just did on this on this um, on Nvidia here, it's got a lot of ground to make up to equal up to its current market cap valuation. Like this company needs to, if it moves higher, it's only going to get even more overvalued based on all the numbers that we have currently. I mean, this thing's just got to make just a lot more money every month, which it can do. It looks like it might do, but it's going to take time too. It's not going to just do it overnight. And currently this thing is incredibly overvalued, but you know, it might grow into its valuation as well. So, but that, you know, that's really all I got for NVIDIA. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see what, what Wednesday holds for us. You know, Wednesday is going to be a big day for this company and probably for the whole market, really. Um, last but not least, Charter. Mind you, this is going to be more of a longer term trade. And currently what I see on Charter here. So we have a valuation of 30% margin of safety of 496, which is right about where this trend line is up here. This little purple line is about where we're at for <clears throat> um, fair market value, or sorry, um, uh, purchase price value, 30% margin of safety. We are currently trading at 420 a share. And I see what's going on is this thing, there's this, 11 year trend line that it broke through, has retested, failed, retested, failed again, retesting for a third time. I think it's gonna fail again, but not down to here. I think it's gonna fail. It's gonna pull back to this support and then it's gonna finally make it resume higher. It'll probably pull back maybe this week and then bounce up and head towards its fair market value in this range here, 580 roughly range. So obviously this is something that's not gonna happen in probably a week or two, probably a couple months, but I believe that Charter, it currently, it has broken its long-term downtrend. It is now making new highs and higher lows. I believe Charter is now working its way back up to where it should be correctly valued. So Charter for me, uh, I will be adding to my position size in this. I own Charter at a lower price in this range. And I will be looking to add now that there's confirmation of higher highs and looking to potentially take profits up in this, you know, 565, 80 range is, you know, kind of my range of where I'd look to, to take profits. 
Um, and then, yeah, so NVIDIA, again, just going to be <clears throat> your day trade. There's not really, <clears throat> you don't really want to buy at these levels, I don't think. But Charter, um, I think, is a, a really good long-term buy. And TMF, I think, is, you know, your mid-term buy as well. I think it's more of a swing trade on TMF. I think NVIDIA, if you want to play it, your day trade. Charter would be more your long-term hold for a while. Um, kind of diversify a little bit there between in just one week's time here. But uh, that's it for this video. Let me know your top picks for the week. Um, also, if there's any a company you like valued, uh, drop that down below. Uh, but thanks for watching, and we'll be back soon with more.